Good morning, good morning. I guess good day for most of you actually, unless you're on the West Coast, it's still morning. Um, I'm just gonna let this build for a second and get a little audience going before I start rambling on. Um, I'm hoping that you, oh, well, first of all, I, I forgot to, yesterday's video, I forgot to even say who I was. Um, my name is Don Thompson, and I am the president and founder of a nonprofit organization called Improving Birth. And um, I, to, yesterday, I talked about the need for community leaders and um, what we like to call <clears throat> excuse me, um, healthy birth warriors in every city and every community in the United States in order to really make an impact. Uh, Improving Birth has been working for a long time from a national level, and we held rallies. We've been holding rallies each year um, around Labor Day in cities all across the country and even um, in some cities around the world which has had a pretty significant impact, um, especially from a media standpoint and getting the um, information and messages trending out there about the state of maternity care, about high cesarean rates, about the induction rates um, around the country and the overuse of many of these things. Um, but the reality is, can you imagine what we could do if we had these sorts of events all year round and there were a place for women to go or pregnant people to go um, in their communities to get more information, to view birth videos, to um, there's so many amazing, great birth documentaries out there that um, could really open up a discussion and, and also um, build a community around the birth community itself, the birth providers, um, bringing them together so that they can connect and rely on each other. So <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about today though is the reality of what being a community leader means because it is not all rainbows and butterflies. Uh, and I can tell you this firsthand um, as I uh, as I became a doula and started seeing the challenges within the birth community, um, I was really passionate and in my desire to want to do something else, right? To do something in addition to just reaching one mama at a time. And so um, I joined our San Diego Birth Network here. And I joined as the vice president and I stayed on in this organization with for eight years um, in that capacity. And I managed most, most of the things from the organizing the monthly meetings that we had, um, which, you know, comes to some of the challenges that we had. We didn't always have a great turnout. And I am, <clears throat> I'm my own worst critic. Okay. So I would always take that on so personally about like, you know, why people weren't showing up in greater numbers. But then, you know, looking back, I can see that we had these fantastic events that drew so many people. Like every year we would have a red tent event. And in fact, they still do it to this day. And we would have hordes of women coming. And if you don't know what a red tent is, please look it up. It's, um, it's this incredible uh, space that you create for um, either women who are currently pregnant or went through a difficult birth. And it's a place for, and some, and I, I shouldn't say just difficult birth, some just people who want to share their birth story. Some are good, some are bad, um, but it's a safe space for women to um, come and share. And the success of that event was tremendous and it grew each year, every year we would have, you know, women who attended the previous year make sure that they brought their girlfriends. And um, it was just an incredibly impactful thing. We would have baby fairs and we would have um, the rally obviously here and so many different things that brought families together. But even more importantly than that, we went from a doula group of 
just, um, th I think we had 13 or 15 of us doulas. And in the uh, seven, I think within about seven, six or seven years, we had 80 providers and everything from, we had obstetricians and midwives and acupuncturists and prenatal yoga and childbirth educators. And we would hold these events quarterly where we would all come together as these, you know, these coordinators would come together or these providers would come together and we would have these great discussions. But more importantly, we got to know each other because there's something to be said about the women who go to a provider for, for whatever it is, maybe it's acupuncture, maybe it's massage, but then she starts talking about some of the things that she's concerned about or worried about her pregnancy. And right off the tip of your tongue, as a provider, you have the ability to then refer her to someone else within that group that you've gotten to know, that you trust, that you know is um, giving good information. So the reality though is, is that if you feel moved to be a community leader. It's a lot, it's a huge commitment. It's a time commitment. It's a heart commitment. It's everything. But I think the rewards that come out of it, the families who come back, I remember this one family, um, I got an email and it was like three years after uh, she'd attended one of our um, meetings and gotten some information and I'd spent some time with her afterwards and like three years later she sent me an email because she was getting ready to have another baby a third baby or maybe it was her third baby so she had come to us during her first or right after her first birth and she just sent me this incredible email that said you know I just want to thank you because I'm about to have my third baby and I know it's going to be incredible in comparison to what happened the first time. And it has everything to do with what I learned at your event. And I just felt like I had to say thank you. And I, I don't know about you, but <laughs> that pretty much, I don't know, that just got me right in the heart. Um, but also being a community leader is I'm not always good at this. I'm not always good for myself at asking for help. But you've got to build the doers, the those people that are just as passionate as you are and get them working beside you. And because you will be that much more successful if you really want to be a community leader. But you're also going to come up, I mean, every community is different, right? Every, whatever the need is, some in some communities, the need is about VBAC access. In some communities, it, it's about midwifery access. In some communities, it's about home birth access, being able to have home birth accessible to um, women. I mean, in some states, it's still illegal for um, a, a home birth. So, well, the midwife, not the home birth. But anyway, so that's like a whole other thing. But the point is, is that you can get a community together and start pushing for better care. Um, the other thing that happens, like we've seen over and over again in, in active cities where they've had a group of people working together in this way, whether it's through a formal chapter or not, but they've had pretty good success about, you know, what it looks like to, um, to be able to, get the lines of communication open, right? They are talking to providers. They are, um, some of them are even coming out to events and participating and coming to some of the meetings. And I think I'm trying to look up something because I wanted to share it with you. It was supposed to be up already, but something happened. So, um, but, you know, some of the things that we've seen from I just want to read a couple of these really is what I want to say. So Amy Power is um, a community leader in Indiana. And she said, we've strengthened the birth community in this area and provided a platform for evidence-based related information to be easily accessible to the public. It has created opportunities for us to pursue exciting new connections 
and the media exposure has allowed us to open lines of communication with area providers and hospitals that were previously closed to us. Heightened awareness of issues surrounding birth and maternity care have contributed to things like the North, I love this, Northwestern Indiana Birth Professionals Review. This is a social media platform that allows the area providers, uh, no, allows, uh, oh, sorry, allows birthing women to leave anonymous reviews of area providers and provides a great resource for women who desire evidence-based care um, to research research the satisfaction of those area providers. So, you know, it's essentially what we'll eventually be doing with our mother-friendly provider designation. But it's, you know, something local where women can post anonymously what, what their experience was and other women can then go and find a provider based on those reviews. So Corey Gentry, this one is super exciting. She was in, she's in uh, California. While serving in leadership position, positions, I've realized how much more effective activism is as part of an organization as opposed to taking more of a lone wolf or maybe a disorganized pact approach. A representative from a local nonprofit may have opportunities to share their message with local community leaders, hospital leadership, and influence policy. And that certainly has been our experience. I want to pretend it's just business as usual, but getting called to give our birth network's position on best maternity care practices when hospital policies are being formed can be a pinch me moment. And it's possible because of the relationships we were able to form. That to me is so huge. It's huge. And we had the same experience here in San Diego. One of the local hospitals requested a meeting with us and I love the fact that uh, that same hospital is now, it, uh, rumor has it, that they are posting all of the doctor's cesarean rates in the doctor's lounge so that they can see each other's rates and so that, and with the intention of improving their rates, right? And that came from the pressure from us, from this community saying, look, you need to be doing better. You have the highest cesarean rate in California and you can do better. And they responded and started putting things in place to help reduce their cesarean rate. And it's, it's, it, that is literally the quintessential reason why we need people like you, people that are passionate about making a real difference and having an impact, a lasting impact that could be generations from now. And listen, I know it's not an easy task. I, we have, we all have families. We all, I mean, or I'm assuming oh, we all have families, but many of us have families. Many of us have, you know, sometimes second jobs. And um, I think that if you really want to make a difference that you find a way, right? And maybe it's not this huge, massive movement, right? But maybe it's just monthly meetings that people can come to and get evidence-based information that they can go and share. You know, wouldn't it be great if you have the ACOG printout about due dates and about about ultrasound and about, you know, like where all those things stand and that, and that mama could take it to her provider and say, here, I know you're telling me this, but this is what this says. What do you say about that? And it opens the line of communication with their provider as well. The other thing I wanted to share was um, something uh, Anna Paula Markle posted, uh, if you don't know her, she's with Beanie Birth in Sherman Oaks, California. And she's also, um, I think she's currently president of Dona. But, you know, she posted the other day that, I'm going to just read it, one of the most gratifying moments of my career, second monthly trip of Kaiser Sunset Obstetrics team to Beanie Birth. Our teaching room filled with attending physicians, residents, midwives, labor and delivery nurses, discussing positive hospital birth, professional role of doulas, latest research and creative ways to implement positive change into their hospital. I mean, this has been years of work for her, but only with the intention of improving things. And she's got these lines of communication open with uh, uh, Cedar Cyanide, with Kaiser, some of the two biggest hospitals in Los Angeles County. And that's the kind of impact that you can have. You can have this kind of impact. 
But I think it's important that there is a system behind it, right? And a name behind it. And, you know, improving birth is here to do just that. The reason I started improving birth or, the, or how it started, I didn't even start improving birth intentionally. It kind of started itself. But I, what I did do was organize a rally. And what I knew, I just knew that there were so many other people out there like me. I, at the time, I was associating with doulas because that's who I saw um, the conversations through Facebook was happening. And I just knew they were just as frustrated as I was. And I knew that if they just had the tools to do something that they would. And that's exactly what I did. I created a toolkit for the rally and it was incredible. And we're continuing that thought process through this process too, okay? So if you are watching this and you are feeling called, because I think it is a calling, being a community leader is a calling, it is a, if you feel this in your gut and you just think, yes, I have, I want to do more. I just don't necessarily know how or what or when or how to even start, right? I can just tell you that we are here to help you. And even through these harder times, when you come across conflict in your community, when you come across, um, issues, you know, ma massive issues within your community that you need support on. Improving birth is here to do that. So tomorrow I'm going to talk about um, the last thing of about this, like, where do you do? What do you start? How do you start? When, you know, where do you go? And what kind of support system that you can get and what you can expect. Um, and hopefully encourage you to want to be that healthy birth warrior in your community, the superhero to your tribe. Um, anyways, I thank you. Um, if you, there, there will be another email tonight and then post tonight that will link you back to this video and another page with some information. So if you're interested and you want to get some more information, you're welcome to, to do that. Um, but otherwise I'd love for you to, Join me tomorrow and talk about how to maximize your impact for the pregnant families in your community. Thanks so much.